Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again. And I'm standing before the 10 inch Logan lathe and I'm getting ready to do a project here that I'm going to show you how uh, I'm going to do it. But before I do, just a comment. I'm having trouble getting some of your uh, comments on uh, YouTube because, you know, Google took over YouTube and they got to improve everything to death and now the uh, comments are not easy to get. They're not, uh, they don't uh, come on as an email like they used to so I, I don't get all the comments anymore unless I really search for them so you'll have to bear with me on that but uh, most of the comments I cannot answer anyway because I get too many of them but uh, I appreciate them and keep them coming but uh, I, I, I don't know what they're doing with this what they call Google Plus but it, it's totally insane well the project for today is I want to make new felt wipers for the Logan lathe and no matter what brand lathe you got they do have wipers on both ends of the carriage this is actually the saddle part of the carriage and there's a V felt wiper here and it's just a straight one on the other side and the purpose of them of course is to wipe the chips and debris off of the ways as the carriage advance advances to, to clean it, keep the chips from getting under there where they will do damage and also they hold oil and help to lubricate uh, the ways. So I'm going to take these off real quickly and uh, we'll look at them. No matter what brand lathe you got, most of them are just held on with a screw and I've already loosened these up. A uh, piece of sheet metal that is the appropriate shape and a felt wiper. And that, as you can see, is 90 degrees. It's like a V. And then uh, the one back here, at least on a Logan, is just straight. Now, on uh, some other brands, they might be uh, V shaped as well. Also, some lathes are going to have these on the tail stock, depending on the brand. Let's go over to the bench. On my way to the bench I stopped at the Atlas lathe just so you can see what those uh, way wipers look like and they actually are L shaped but since these are flat ways rather than V ways the, uh, the L runs uh, just like this 90 degrees and the same thing on the back side. Now I'm at the closing 12 inch lathe and you can see that it's got two wipers here. I'm on the back side of the carriage now rather than uh, the front side. And uh, we got one here that's V-shaped and the other one is just flat. Similarly on the tailstock, and not too many lathes have them on the tailstock, but we have a V-shaped uh, wiper there and a flat wiper here. All of these can be replaced and, and uh, rebuilt as I'm going to show you regardless of what machine uh, they are from in a similar manner as to what I'm going to show you here presently. I finally made it over to the bench. Now here are some of the things that you need to make uh, these wipers. Uh, perhaps your exacto knife set, a leather punch, a regular Stanley Handyman with a brand new blade, uh, some soft wood to do your cutting on, a square, and then of course the quarter inch felt. Now a man uh, who's one of my subscribers sent this to me and I thank you very much and uh, you know I won't give out names uh, with privacy and all but uh, a man sent this to me and I believe he said that he got it uh, from Granger's, but I, I looked it up. Granger's has it, and so does uh, McMaster Car, and probably other suppliers. It's quarter inch thick, gray, firm felt, which is really wool. And that's going to be the perfect material for making this. I doubt that this is something you would find at the hardware store. I'm going to make the straight wiper first and I believe it's probably best to punch the hole first with the leather punch. And I've got that right on the corner there and in position and simply going to punch it. And I'll take that out of there. I like to twist it a little bit. 
and now I'll pull that slug out of there. I'm just going to use the original one as a pattern. It sure doesn't work very well to try to do a layout on the felt. I tried that with the with the Sharpie marker and with a regular number two lead pencil and it wasn't very successful at all. So just holding the wiper on there, I'm going to take the blade, push it right on down to the wood, and I'm also going to cut it this way. And she came loose, and I think I will now have to elongate the hole a little bit, like the sample. In other words, turn the hole into a slot. And I'll do that also with this knife right on the board. That little slot didn't cut quite as cleanly as I had hoped for, but uh, it will fit the screw quite nicely. I trimmed this corner off a little bit and I'm back to using a regular straight straight edge uh, blade, single edge blade. That works quite good because it's nice and sharp on the wood. And this one now is complete. Now this is this felt is a little thicker I think than what I started with although I believe it's going to compress because this one looks like it was possibly a full quarter inch to start with and then got compressed by the uh, the little uh, steel part. And I need to make another one of those because I need two of each. But that one's ready to go. Now I'm making the second one and I already located the hole in the felt. not quite all the way through so I will use a center punch here to push the slug out. You know this stuff is kind of fuzzy but that'll come off. Take the scissors and trim that off but it made a pretty good hole. I put the original screw in the hole I'm going to put the old wiper right up into the screw and then use it as a pattern. We'll see how well the single edge blade works, guillotine style. Now I'm going to have to saw with it. Heavy artillery. That works better because I got a handle. That went right through. Similarly, on the other side, if I can get my hands out of the way, my big fat fingers. Now I'll cut the inside. There we got it, just a little trimming to do. Pull off the fuzz and it should be done. And there's the other one. Now these are made so they'll stick out a little bit farther here than uh, the steel. 
think I'll have to trim this one just a little bit on this side. Just a little long on that side. So I'll take a little bit of that off with that uh, razor knife. And I'll meet you over at the lathe and I'm going to install these even though I need uh, another pair. This is a Roper Whitney, or I guess just Whitney. Later it became Roper Whitney. Notcher, 90 degrees. I know what you're saying. I don't have one of those. How am I going to make them? But let's see how this works first. And then I'll show you the way that you'll probably have to uh, do it. And this is really made for sheet metal. All right, I positioned the felt and the notcher approximately on the lines. And I'm just going to squeeze it. And that nipped it right out. Fairly clean. Now I'll move up to the next line and see what happens. I have repositioned the notcher. And it's going to take a little more uh, effort now to cut that. And there we are, rough cut. And we got a couple other cuts to make and that can be done with the knife. Or, uh, I suppose a sheet metal shear would work too, but now I have to trim the corners. And I'll do that. I think I'm going to use a knife because that's what you'll have to use at home. And there they are, attached back to the carriage. It was a nice fit. And uh, I'm going to take a little oil and I'm going to soak them down overnight. And that felt will absorb that oil. Then I'll move them back and forth a few times and check them out tomorrow. Now I have uh, the other side to do, the, another pair of them. Now for those of you that do not want to do this, I believe that for some brands of lathe you're going to find these uh, that have been die cut available on eBay. I don't know if they're available for the Logans, but I did see them available for South Bend lathes. So give it a try if you need uh, new wipers on yours. If, if you don't, you still may have found this of mild interest. This is Tubal Kane saying, subscribe to my channel and so long for now.